Steve Weiss, theater and dance critic for the Chicago Sun-Times, and welcome to Curtain Call. Today I have three prodigies with me, and I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves. Why don't we start with you? I'm Michael Sarah, prodigy. <laughs> nice. I'm Kieran Culkin. I'm Tavi Gebenson. Don't and cut your well, intro now. Kieran. No. Nice Don't cut that so it just seems like I'm saying prodigy. Wouldn't think of it. Unprompted. And all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start with that. Are uh, going to be in This Is Our Youth by Kenneth Lonergan, which is starting out at Steppenwolf Theatre and then is headed to Broadway. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So since I mentioned the word prodigy, <laughs> do you see both the, pro the pros and cons of having started sort of professional lives so early? It's kind of hard to weigh that because it's all you know. You know, I, I, um, I had a really good experience to working through my young life. How old were you when you started? Uh, when I was nine. When you were nine. Yeah. What about you, Karen? <sighs> what were you talking about? What's prodigies? Like, what's, like, <laughs> God. what's it like being a prodigy? Well, you're sort of from a family of prodigies. Uh, don't, okay. <laughs> but, but. Um, what's it like being a bald one? It's great. It's great. I like it. My, uh, my brother's <laughs> Billy, Stephen. We're in touch. Handsome family. I mean, were you conscious of the fact that you really were living a more adult life than most of your peers? Well, I don't think that that's necessarily true. I mean, it gets kind of it's different. I was still, I didn't miss out on any kind of childhood. I think that's what a lot of people think is happening. I was working since I was about six. I wasn't like a young professional child. I still get to be a kid and I did that. And then it didn't become what I did for a living until I was actually an adult. I oddly felt like my first adult job was when I was 18. That's just the way it felt. So Tavi, you uh, grew up in Oak Park. <laughs> yeah. And you went to public schools. Mm -hmm. But you very early on found an identity for yourself that was kind of larger than life. Um, how did that happen? Than life itself. Um, well, I think what Kieran said about how it didn't feel like work. Like, I feel like everything I've been doing has helped me prolong the best parts of childhood. Like, in middle school, I felt like everyone around me was being a tiny adult, but then I started, like, using the internet to share my writing, and, and that felt like I had found, I had, like, kind of cracked a code of, like, a way to still enjoy the things that were really exciting to me as a kid. The two of you have done um, production of This Is Our Youth before. What makes you love it? This point in your life that this play touches on is a really specific time that every, everybody has. It's a, you know, like right after high school and like where your childhood is very clearly behind you, but you're not quite an adult yet. And there's that step in between, which for some people lasts forever. Right. And, <laughs> and some people it's very brief. This is, this for them is that moment. What about for you, Michael? Well, I don't know. I don't have as long of a history with it as Kieran does, but I mean, we did this two years ago right, in Australia. Yeah. It's like two weeks. Yeah, for two weeks. And it was such a short run that, you know, it really felt like there was so much more for us to kind of mine. Mm -hmm. and, and I really don't think we even scratched the surface with, you know, how deep we could go with it there. Mm -hmm. So it was just really exciting when there was another opportunity. Tavi, you're kind of a newcomer to this. How did you get the job? I mean, I have done a bit of other acting, and so through my agents I got the script, flew to New York for the callback, and then I met with Anna, the director here, because she lives here. Did you play a scene with these two guys? Was that part of the audition? I read with Michael, with Michael. at the callback, and Kenny was there. We Kenny Lonergan, the playwright. Yeah. <laughs> then we can just go to the source right. and know, you know, what the people who inspired this play were like and, and all of that, so yeah. Did any of you have specific questions for Kenny Lonergan, the playwright? It's just like an endless dialogue with Kenny, and, yeah. and he's just this endless well of um, useful information. And you so don't have to poke him too much for it. No. You say just, hey, talk yeah. about the scene a little bit, and then you just yeah. listen for a long time. So what time? are some things yes. that stick in your mind when you're working on it? You do start to feel like you're really having a first-hand exposure to this world because, you know, it's so fresh in Kenny's mind and he's able to um, render it, you know, so clearly for you and it changes hugely just after every conversation with him. Yeah, we didn't even, for the couple weeks we did, we didn't get that last time really. We're getting no, that now. No, it's true, yeah. What, what was something that he maybe clarified for you? It, it, he's right, it's really hard to be specific because then he just starts telling stories of the kids that he knew that these mm -hmm. people are based on. And then you just hear that and it's just, it's so insightful without even, uh, without even being able to realize and apply the things that he's saying. It's yeah. just like. It's just a picture. A picture that he paints. Oh, I, yeah, I, I know what that looks like now. Karen, why don't you tell me just briefly what the play is about for those who don't know it. Oh, Set in New York. Boy. In the, and this is a time in New York when the whole drug issue, and not taught, but serious drugs, became part of the fabric for rich kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and and that was something new. And do you talk about that at all? Do you think in, about in that? the show? In, the, in well, in the show, and just among yourselves and with the director. Um, well, I think that yeah, because they are pretty much a bunch of rich kids, and with yeah. whether they realize it or not, messed up home family lives. I think this is what Kenny lived through. That was what his experience was, you know, and this is kind of his world. So the play kind of is that, you know, shows that. It's not really a... The, about that. Uh, yeah, about there's, that. there's not really a dialogue about it, but it's kind of, that's the moment that's being shown, you know. I mean, one thing I really like about the play and how it's written is that there are, I guess, you could get into a discussion about, like, how they deal with class, but I like how it's not necessarily about that or about like a, you know, a portrait of this time, it kind of, I mean, this is also probably because I'm so inside of it that I, s it all feels like real people, but there's that too. Did you come to this, Tavi, with some kind of uh, acting training at all? Or do you, is it instinctual? Um, I think it's a combination of both. I don't know, like for me every morning, the th stuff I end up going back to is always just the like hippie summer camp stuff of just like energy, feel the space, <laughs> like, <laughs> and it, that for me is, cause I could like analyze this play to death and I feel like what it really comes down to for me is just like getting outside of my head and doing the like summer camp, like breathe, count out loud. <laughs> so what do you, what are the three of you gonna do when you grow up? <laughs> Sorry? <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> Um, do you have, are there, are there other things it's that turned you turned into an attack. I know, because <laughs> I am growing up, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> but I mean, is, is, is really, is um, acting the thing? Like next fall I'm going to college, and I have to kind of figure out if I want to... So a year from this fall? Yeah. You'll start, so you took a gap year? Yes. Well, that's um, a nice way to spend a gap year on Broadway. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. Um, I'm not fully sure what my major will be, not feel to tied down to one department. What about you? Any desire to maybe return? Or to school? Yeah. No. Not. no. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Michael? Going back to school? Yeah. Did you, you finished high school? No. You didn't finish I high didn't school? I didn't finish high school, no. Oh. I don't think anyone should. <laughs> 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 and they would have eaten me alive if I went back to, to get the credit. <laughs> Just for gym class? Yeah, so here I am. What about the eight times a week discipline? Um, is that something that you understand that that you, that you know you can get that energy for eight times a week at a very specific moment? And so I've never done a show that's supposed to go this long. I've done like six week runs, six, seven, something like that. This is supposed to, we're gonna be doing this until January. Yeah, like 20 um, or more. It's a lot. And I've heard people say that and I was like, oh, I can never do it for that long. But this is the one show I know that I can. And, and when it ends, I'm gonna be hoping that I had another four months. I bet. Well, and the other thing that's nice about this production is once we finish here, you know, and we take it to Broadway, we're going to have to kind of restage everything because it's a different style. Right. Because the upstairs studio at Steppenwolf, you are yeah. kind of the, the bowling alley yes. with the audience on both on sides. Right. sides. And then right. you're going to have to revamp it for a proscenium. Yeah. And we just saw that the proscenium stage is actually where everything is is completely different. Yeah. Like everything has moved around. So it will be. Cool. Yeah. Very It'll be fresh. almost a second production. Yeah. yeah. It'll be fresh. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing it, and thanks very much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining Curtain Call.